Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. It is Trace McSorley, quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens, coming off Monday Night Football. It was perfect timing. Uh, first, let's let's figure out how is your knee. Are you okay? Yeah, no, I'm doing well. Um, you're, we'll figure out kind of the extent of everything, but so far everything's looking looking pretty positive. So, I'm gonna keep our fingers crossed. That um, so that was a crazy Monday Night Football game. Yeah. I felt bad for you because you did make a big play to even have the Ravens still alive there, and then you obviously don't know how it like plays out on TV, but it was literally Trace McSorley like hurts his knee, he's down. Oh, but Lamar's back. See a Trace. Yeah, <laughs> people kind of just moved on. Was how was the was the field as bad as like they were making it out to be? Um, I mean, guys were definitely slipping. Uh, last night. I mean, I know there were a couple of times Lamar slipped a little bit. I think he m even changed his cleats at one point. Um, and we got into halftime. There were, you know, they had uh, different cleats for guys in there. Uh, so I think, you know, guys are slipping around, but I mean, it you know, kind of is what it is a little bit. How much different is it as a quarterback to have to wear the studs, the long ones? Because they were saying, the announcers were saying how, you know, no quarterback wants to be forced to change out of their normal cleats because they'll make your feet hurt or something like that at the end of the game. For you personally, is it like a big deal to change out of those out of their shoes? Yeah, you like just having like, you know, the, the cleats that you have, they're like broken in and then trying to break in a new pair mid game. Like you, you can bother your feet a little bit. So like I left the ones on that I had. Um, so maybe I, maybe I should have changed them out just for, for the other cleats. But um, yeah, I think it's just kind of like personal preference, really. Like if you don't mind breaking in a new pair of cleats, in the game, then you probably will switch it. I think it's just each guy has his own different preference. All right, so you're in the trust tree. Are you wearing a part of my take hoodie? Can I see that? Uh, yeah. Oh. Of course, the social distancing. Oh, there club. we go. Oh, social, social distancing, distancing club. club. Perfect. All right, so you're in the trust tree. You can speak freely. Tell us the truth. Lamar was pooping. <laughs> nah, he wasn't. It was it was cramps. He he wasn't pooping. That, what, well, cramps what part can, yeah, of the, the body stomach? was the intestine yeah. was cramped? Uh, it was like he said it was like his forearm was cramping, and then his he that run they everyone saw where it looked like a poop run. Yeah, yep. locker room. It was like his, his calf or something was cramping, so he was trying not to like it to lock up on him. Uh huh. Great, you're but, a great backup a quarterback. Teammate. That's a great teammate Got move. Story That's smart. You, Trace just winked at us, so he's you a know locker the truth. Room guy. Yep, he's uh, doing he's doing a motion like a wiping his butt motion, so he's clear that. Yep. Okay, we got it. So we'll stop talking. Uh, yeah. about I'll it. ask him. Hilarious though. Like after the game, <laughs> yes, seeing all those coming out like the internet was. They're all over that. That was so funny. I don't know what it says about us just as a society or as an online group of people that everybody just assumed, like, Lamar was back there just crapping his brains out, and that's what was happening. But we all just kind of ran with it. Um, let me ask this in a different way. When you went back to the locker room um, after after your knee got tweaked a little bit, how many candles were lit uh, mm. in the locker room? <laughs> For breeze, oh, maybe? What did, what did the locker room smell like? Mm -hmm. See, they, they do always have candles lit mm -hmm. behind the stalls. So I can't tell if they were newly lit ones. <laughs> not, but they do always got candles lit by the stalls in the locker room. Interesting. So so last night's game was so, so much fun. It was probably game of the year in the NFL. And it was also one of those great nights where Twitter was going crazy. Everyone's having fun. When you get back after a game like that, maybe a little different because you got hurt last night, but you've been in crazy games. Do you like sit down and take a uh, ten minutes to try to catch up on everything and be like, "Holy shit, I missed a lot of commentary about this game." Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of that. Like, you know, you get get back, you like get back on the bus, and you kind of have that time to you know, decompress a little bit, check out your phone, see what's been going on, uh, scroll through Twitter, Instagram, and you know, catch up on messages. So, I mean, to be able to see like the internet's response to last night's game, uh, you know, obviously, like you said it was a crazy game, just back and forth, just great football game on Monday night in general, but then seeing, you know, the, the internet's responses to it, it's, it's pretty cool to be able to do that and, you know, just kind of see what the internet has to say. What, uh, so backup quarterback, uh, like you've been in a couple games now, how, what's it like on the sideline being like, I might be in any minute. Do you have, to, is it hard to stay ready during a game? Like how do you mentally stay in the game Knowing there's probably a good chance you're not going to play, but you could, like last night, be thrown into it. Monday Night Football game, national television. Yeah, uh, I mean, part of it is just you know trying to stay mentally locked in. So like we got the earpiece, get the call from like the you know know what play we're running from our OC, and then trying to do like a, a mental rep every time as best you can, just so you know you're staying locked in and staying ready. 
Um, but yeah, it, it does get a little bit, a little bit difficult at times, and then try, just really just trying to stay warm, especially on like a night like last night. It's cold out there, just trying to stay heated up and loose and ready whenever. And then I always like to keep like a smelling salt with me, just kind of if I need to, yep. need mm-hmm. to be ready to go, just hit that and then lock in real quick. I love yes. it. Uh, so you, now you are wearing that the backup uh, headset, so you get to hear all the plays coming in. You get to hear, I would assume. Uh, Greg Roman and Harbaugh talking about what to do in certain situations. How often do they try to call a punt and then Lamar runs over the sideline and is like, "Hey, we're not punting. Please send me back out there." Um, I mean, I don't see, I don't hear the conversations between them because all I hear is like the player to coach. So whatever he's saying to Lamar, I could hear that. But I mean, I think anytime we go out there, Lamar wants to go score a touchdown. Um, so if it's a you know short yardage situation, fourth and short, and we're fringe field goal punt range Lamar's gonna try his best to not let me go for this and go get a touchdown or at least get us closer for the field mm-hmm. goal so I think that's just his personality and uh maybe it's happened a few other times and they've caught on camera where he's been able to kind of sway a decision to let us go for it but uh you know Harbaugh lo- likes to be aggressive and you got a guy like Lamar you trust him to make the play and more often than not it's worked out for us so uh in the offseason they bring in it's you RG3 and Lamar uh I think it's probably fair to say that like Lamar and RG3 have a skill set that is rare in the NFL, right? Mm-hmm. They they will be able to run the same offense. Um, and then you are a new guy. They bring you in. Did they try – was Greg Roman like, hey, we're going to have you learn the exact same offense that these other guys are learning? Or is there is there a trace package that when you come into the game, it's like, hey, this is what we're going to do? No, it's uh, – hey, this is our offense. Uh, this is what we do. And uh, being able to that, you know, I might not be the same skill set as them, you know, athletically what they can do, but I can still run around, can still do some stuff with my legs and kind of be a threat to the defense. So, uh, you know, we got our offense and, you know, we, that is what it is. So it doesn't, and I think that's a good thing that we got so that we don't have to change our entire offense based on in a situation where some guy has to go in because uh, the guy's got cramps and we are able to go in and not change up our entire offense. We just run the same system. Yeah. You ran a four, five, seven, 40 in at the combine. Did you get asked to work out with the DBs? Yeah, they did ask me to do work out with them. That's the disrespectful. What did you when, when they said that? Did you re, you were like, no, I'm a quarterback? Uh, yeah, they like kind of pulled me aside and they were like, hey, you know, some coaches, scouts want to see you as a DB. Uh, would you mind staying after and you know doing some DB drills? And I told them that you know I've I've been working out as a quarterback and that's what I'm here to do is just be a quarterback and kind of just told them I appreciate it, but uh, I'm gonna be a quarterback. I like that. I like that. Um, How much of your success do you put into your uh, parents having the wherewithal to give you the name Trace, the nickname Trace, even though your given name is Richard? Because the story is your parents were like, we don't want you to be little Ricky or Mm -hmm. Richard or Ricky. And they saw Trace Armstrong on TV and were like, we're going to name you Trace. So that I mean, that I do think I'm a big name guy. I think that has a lot to do with it. Have you had that moment where you're like, if I were Ricky McSorley, I'd probably not be in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, I think it definitely set me on a path. Uh, you know, I think being that you Trace Armstrong, great football player, and that's kind of where my parents got the name. I think it just set me on a path towards football. Um, and then, you know, you know, Ricky McSorley, Trace McSorley, I think Trace McSorley's got a little bit of a better ring to it as a player. So um, I, I think that, yeah, you could probably give a little bit of credit to – just the fact they picked my name and set me on the path towards towards football. Yeah, Trace McSorley is a great name. Now, what about uh, the fact that you your name keeps going viral on TikTok, like you are a TikTok thing? Billy was explaining to us, our intern, uh, he was like, do you guys know who Trace McSorley is? Everybody's talking about him on TikTok. And we're like, yes, Billy, we know who Trace McSorley is. Because no, it, it actually we've was watched wor- college football before. It, it was worse that Billy was like, you didn't know who Trace McSorley was till I brought him up. I was like, dude. Yeah. I, I'm a Wisconsin fan. You ripped my heart out in the 2016 Rose Bowl. Yep. We were at yep. that game. That's not true. That and is Billy not thought true. he introduced That's you not true. to us. So, um, so how um, much there, of no, uh, Trace? I've known about you since 2016 when you play. Uh, I can't name the game right now because I'm freezing up. But never mind. Billy's known about <laughs> you since 2016. He wants to clarify. <laughs> Thank you, Billy. Uh, but when you first started blowing up on TikTok, was it weird for you initially? Were you like, "What's going? Why is this becoming such a thing?" Yeah, I didn't know what was going on. So, like, I. I just got like a TikTok profile and like downloaded the app like not long, like a week ago. So like I hadn't had it. I woke up one morning and like all these people were sending me this video that this kid made with like the the song that uh, the dude made when I was in college. And I mean, it just kind of blew up. 
and I started seeing it on like Instagram, Twitter, like it was all over the place. And I didn't know what was going on. Um, so, I mean, it was just, it was really weird and random how it kind of all came about. How does it go, Billy? Throw it on a dime. Throw it on a dime. That's just it. Just a kid from Bradwood. Can you say the whole it's thing? It's a really good song. It is? Maddie Fresh. Can you say it, Trace? <laughs> Can I say it? I've heard, I've heard it a bunch of times. I'm not a singer, though. Billy, tell Billy, him how it goes. sing it to no. us. Yeah, I think Billy's got it. Yeah. yeah. I have a, so, I have a question. He just asked you to sing it. I was just wondering, <laughs> did you know about the song by Maddie Fresh? Or, you know, like, this random guy makes a song, and was it just out of left field? Or did you know about it while you were playing at Penn State? Yeah, I knew about it. Uh, they, they made it like my senior year, going into my senior year. So I was able, like, they played it. Um, I don't think they ever played it at the stadium, but like I saw it on like social media, and like I think the Penn State football, like the their social media, kind of picked it up a little bit going into my senior year. So I definitely saw it. And I knew about it beforehand. How electric is a, a whiteout in Happy Valley? Because that is one of the like when you think about loud crowds, you think about Saturday Night Football, like LSU. Penn State, maybe maybe Columbus. Like there are certain stadiums where you're like it's just on a different level. Is it like do you was it truly a different level? Could you feel how different it was compared to every other stadium you've been in? Yeah, you definitely could. Like it was, it was a completely different feel from like walking into like even like walking into the big house in Michigan. That like they got the big like they high seating capacity, but like it's not the same like electric type energy that you have like with the whiteout and. Like I played in a few other stadiums, like Columbus, um, Iowa was another one that, that was pretty electric playing there. But I still think, you know, obviously I'm biased because you know, I went to Penn State and everything. But I I still think that, and from everyone I've talked to, they said that the the White House the best atmosphere that they've ever been in. Like it's one of those things that you have to go to it to like actually experience it. Like it looks awesome and sick on TV, mm -hmm. but it's like better in person. Yeah, yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah. Uh, so you were growing up in Ashburn. Were you a were you an R words fan growing up? Were you a Washington football team fan? Uh, I was, I was. There. I mean, you ran into a lot of guys that you know. I live 50 minutes from the facility, so like, there would just be a lot of guys around, and uh, I would see them you know, kind of around town. So went to like their training camp practices every year as a kid. So I, I was a Washington football team fan growing up. Yeah, um, and then so you kind of tough though. Yeah, you you ended up going to Penn State. You you went to Vanderbilt, or you you committed to Vanderbilt for a while. Who else recruited you out of high school? Uh, so out of high school, most teams recruit me as like a, a safety defensive back out of high school. Um, the only other like quarterback offers I really had was like Boston College, and like Wake Forest, and then Vanderbilt. We need Damn. to we need to set up a uh, a showdown between you and Lamar. Have him go up against you at wide receiver and you cover him as a defensive back mm -hmm. and just make Bill Polian super happy to see things playing out the way that he thought it it's would. It's his dream team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's absolutely his dream team. That's exactly how he thought it would have played yeah. out. Huh? Yes. Yes. What does uh, big truss mean? Because we, we had Mark Ingram on the show and we know what yeah. truss is, obviously, but you tweeted recently, mm -hmm. truss. What's that? So, like, it's basically just like, a, like Lamar started it and it really, like, he uses it as like a like i appreciate you or like he uses like it's more just a noun okay. like it's a noun and a verb yeah, at the same time levels. yeah yeah there's, yeah exactly there's levels to it so like mark did the interview where he you know had the big trust and that's where it really blew up introducing lamar last year and then it's just kind of taken off like i don't know where lamar got it from but he like since he came in apparently like that's been his thing and he just uses it so like i tweeted like i think yesterday because like willie had said something about you know last night's game or, or something like that so like the way i use it was like i hey, appreciate you bro like you know this like this is our team our season like it's just kind of like the our team's like call i guess i don't, I don't know <laughs> but, Truss. it's yeah. cool i mean i don't think i'm cool enough to say it so uh it's always cool <laughs> when i see it though um is your dad one of the scariest looking dudes in the world <laughs> when when he sits out in the sun and he's got, you know, the sun beating on his bald head and yeah. the muscles on his head popping out, it uh, it does. Like, he, he can look a little bit intimidating, but he, he looks more intimidating than he actually is. He's like an all-time jawline guy. Because I was looking at tweets oh, yeah. I've had of you, and I, I was like, Trace McSorley's dad is Kelly Slater. And I was like, why did I say that? And then I went and looked for a picture of your dad, and I was like, oh, that's exactly why I said it. Bald head, jawline, just chiseled jawline. 
I'm scared of your father. Yeah, he like he can't hide any of his emotions because his jawline and like a vein that just pumps in his temple. Yep. Like gives away immediately. Yes. Like you can say he's not pissed off, but like we can all see like the blood pumping through his skull. Yeah. Uh-huh. And we're like, no, like you're upset. Like chill out. <laughs> Are you familiar with the Trace McSorley's dad Twitter account? It's at Trace Dad. Uh, I'm not familiar with the account, no. There's one tweet that says, I'm Trace McSorley's dad. I think that's your dad. So I think your dad's on Twitter. It was 2017. Sounds like your dad. Something your dad would say. It adds up. Uh, (laughs) Very simple, straight to the point. (laughs) Maybe you can help me out with something, because we were trying to figure this out last week on part of my take. There are visor guys that play quarterback, and there are guys that don't wear visors at all. Last night, I don't Mm -hmm. think Lamar was wearing a visor. You were wearing a visor. And I've always thought just from a practical standpoint – doesn't that get smudgy? Like, can it make it really, really difficult to see unless you've got somebody that's coming over there cleaning it off almost every 30 seconds? Uh, there's it, at times it can. Uh, you know, they got like pretty much after every drive, there's like equipment guys going around like spraying them and cleaning them. And I don't know what they spray on it, but I think it works as like it doesn't like let it get fogged up. Cause like, especially on like a cold night where like you're breathing on the inside of it and like the, you know, hot air from your breath gets like fogged up on the inside of it. Uh, so it can make it foggy, but they do a good job of keeping them clean. And um, I feel like after a while, you just kind of get used to it. Yeah. Um, and then it's just like you almost don't even notice that it's there. Just a heads up, though. We don't think that any quarterback has ever won a Super Bowl wearing a visor. It's true. I we, guess we got to change that. Then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Be the first. Take off your visor. No, I mean, I think we got to win it with the visor. Oh, okay. I right. that, that's what I'm saying. We need someone <laughs> to do that. It does look cooler. Every time someone has a visor, I'm like, that's – I mean, when you played Madden or any other video game, yeah, you always, always, always had the visor, no matter how ridiculous it looked. No matter or, what position you play when you created a play, you yep. put the visor on. Yep. The reflective Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Um, another bet that maybe you can settle, how big is Patrick Ricard? Is he actually over 300 pounds? Yes. That's insane. Yeah, and that is definitely over 300 pounds. And he's, like, jumping over people, like leapfrogging them? Yeah, Pat is, like – People don't give him like credit for how athletic he is and like he's a freak athlete but and then like you see what he does as a fullback like you know just pancaking people every game like you know he catches in the flat and for some reason dbs will try and tackle him up high and he just like runs through him like they're not there like yeah that's a freak so you played you were big into lacrosse too in high school did bill belichick ever try to get you uh as a wide receiver did he have a conversation with you at the combine? No, I never had a conversation with Belichick about being a wide receiver. But, yeah, I did play lacrosse in high school. He was looking at you, just so you know. He was looking at you for he, sure. I mean, he might have been. He doesn't let anyone know what he's thinking about with the draft. So, I mean, mm-hmm. he's he's got his mind tricks that everyone wants to know what he's up to. So, he could have been. Yeah. How much of playing lacrosse was because your name was Trace McSorley? And mm-hmm. your coach was like, you need to be holding a lacrosse stick. Uh, it wasn't necessarily because my name it was because I played baseball and baseball got boring for me. Oh, and I wanted to do something a little more like fast paced. Too good at it. I like that. Yeah, Trace McSorley not, not, from not Virginia is gonna play lacrosse. It wasn't the too good aspect. <laughs> it was I didn't like standing in you know in the outfield and a ball gets hit to me once every couple innings. Um, what is your favorite game in college? You can't say the 2016 Big Ten Championship game. So that one's off the table. I can't use that one. Cannot use that one. Uh, I'll go with the 2017 whiteout against Michigan. Okay. Right. And you guys, what was the final score? Uh, I don't remember the final score. I know we blew them out, though. But if it, it wasn't nice. for that one, which one would you say? 2016 Big Ten Championship. Okay. Nah, yeah. Nah. 100% of the time. Nah, that game was lame. Walk us through what happened at you halftime lucky, of that game. You were lucky, dude. You know you were lucky, too. You just threw jump balls. You threw jump balls. The last one landed right in stick one's hand. You threw jump balls, and you were just like, hope this works. Close my eyes. Just throw it up. I know. I was very drunk, I mean, so I actually had don't the right guy to be able to do it, though, too. <laughs> Throwing it to Mike Sticky in the end zone on a corner. I'm going to take that every time. Whatever. Whatever. Um, Billy, did you have another <laughs> question? Did you want to ask a question about the throne? Oh, I, I actually – so uh, when I was a senior in high school, that's when you were really going off in 2016 – you know, watching you in nice the Ohio street State. There. No, no, but but like he, we watched him the upset Ohio State, and then the yep. next week he just blew out Purdue, and then we we're like, uh-huh. this guy's the real deal. Um, two questions. First one: so being a football player in the Northeast, when you're getting recruiting stuff, you hear a lot of rumors about different colleges, recruiting visits, whatnot. So I heard a rumor about from some Penn State kids who were uh, doing visits at Penn State, 
and they said that Christian Hackenberg at the time had, uh, you know, at parties would have a huge throne and he was just surrounded by sorority girls who were assigned to him. We heard this rumor and we thought it was like ridiculous, <laughs> but we I've heard it a couple times since. Is there any truth to this? I never saw him on a throne, hmm. sitting on a throne. Now, when he walked in, did everyone like walk into a fraternity party? Did everyone mob him? Yes. Right. But I never like saw like a legitimate like throne with a shrine and you know he's sitting on top and everyone's like just you know beneath him and all that. I never saw that. No. All right. So there's, no there's two quarterbacks. It's no Lamar and Christian. He's never seen on a throne. Yep. Got it. And what was the second <laughs> question? Um, have you ever been to McSorley's Bar in New York City? I haven't, um, but not. we have a mirror. If you're ever in New York City, we should go to that bar. It'd be really fun. I, no, I, that's one I definitely got to take a trip there. I like, I've been wanting to go there, check it out. It's like you know that old town, like old time kind of pub. Yeah. Uh, so definitely got to go there and, and have a few beers. What's really nice about that place is if you order just two beers, they bring you out like eight. Mugs. Yeah, they bring you like six. Right? Yeah. They bring you out like eight small yeah. mugs of beer, so you feel like you're the man once you drink like four of them because it's half a beer basically. And then yeah. you you order another round, and they bring out another like sixteen of them. It's awesome. Uh, um, I assume you know this, but Adam Schefter just tweeted that you were placed on the injured reserve. That's the first I knew that. Oh wait, you didn't know that? Uh no. Shit. Okay, now I feel like a dick. I mean, that's it is what it is. I mean, I didn't know exactly how long it was gonna be. So well, there's only three weeks left. So I assume. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Well, this is a terrible moment in pardon my take history. <laughs> I thought you were gonna be like, yeah, you know, it's a, I'm 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 banged up, but injured reserve. That's not. Is that the season over? Shit. Um. No, I mean, I didn't think it was. You know, from what I heard, I didn't think it was going to be season-ending injury from what I heard from the doc. So this is, yeah, this is maybe awkward. It's time to, maybe it's a roster thing. Jake, wait, hold on. Jake, our stack guy's got some more information. Hold on. According to Mike Florio, you're out for at least three weeks, which means you're done for the regular season, but you can return to return for the postseason. Oh, oh you're playoffs, good. Yeah. Playoffs, dude. You'll come back with that visor and win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we were just talking about. Someone's got to do it. Okay, right. so, yeah, we bounce Martin, back. Okay. That was a bad yeah, moment right Martin, there. Martin. Yeah, I thought maybe someone had told you and I wasn't breaking news to you right there, but we just broke more news to you that you're back for the playoffs. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get make sure Lamar's got his visor on. I'll have mine on just in case, and then we could make sure that, you know, we win the Super Bowl, and then now someone's won it with a visor. Yeah, mm -hmm. slip him some Pepto before every game so that uh, you won't be needed. What was your pregame meal last night? Ooh, good question. Last night it was – uh, spaghetti uh -huh. and uh, filet with broccoli. Okay, how how was the filet cooked? Uh, medium rare. Ooh. Was there chili on the spaghetti? No, just marinara sauce. Okay, you were in Ohio. Um, okay. Uh, all right. I have one last question. I do apologize for breaking that news to you. That sucked. I <laughs> sucked. Straight up sucked, it sucked by me. This is just a lame question and kind of a stupid question, but like being Trace McSorley at Penn State. Like that was probably pretty sweet, right? Uh, yeah. No, it, it was it was cool. Had had a bunch of good times there. Can uh can't complain about that. Did you have a moment where you were walking around on campus, maybe after like junior year, where you're like, "This is awesome." Um, I mean, so like when I first started playing, like in 2016, we had like a couple of guys on the team got there was like a fraternity that got kicked off of campus. So like some of the guys on the team had like moved into there. Because it was like a lot cheaper rent for him, yeah. So that house kind of became like the football fraternity house. So like after big wins, like after the Ohio State win, like that place was going nuts, right? Like, uh -huh. Ridiculous. And then like, so I think yeah, walking like walking into there and like everyone else is there. I think that was like one of the moments where it was like, yeah, this is pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> I guess. Yes. Use yes. How, how does that work out logistically? If you have a football house, who's in charge of like splitting up? The utilities and be like hey guys can you pay is there like a spreadsheet that someone puts so together it, to send it around like it was like there was only like a few guys on the team that actually lived in there and then it was uh a bunch of other guys that we were like f guys were friends with on campus or you know knew from class or guys that were on the team that decided that football wasn't for them they wanted to live in there um so they all just split up like the utilities of it so there's only they just you know treated it like a normal house with you know, 12, 15 dudes, however many were in there, living there. 
and then they just split it all up evenly. I guess I don't know the logistics how they split all that up. The ultimate man but, cave. Yes, yes, that would. Yeah, uh, no, it was it was a good place. Yes, one of the best places I've ever been to. I think that's. I mean, it's kind of a lame question to ask, but it's also the thing that like every guy thinks about. Like, what would it be like to be the starting quarterback of a big time college football program? Mm-hmm. And like walking around campus and everyone being like, "Ooh, that's Trace McSorley." Ooh, were you there when James Franklin put juice boxes in all the lockers to keep you guys juiced up? Uh, yeah, they were handing those out. They handed those to us as we were like leaving the hotel to go to the like to the game. Did that work? I think, yeah, might have been a Purdue game. Yeah, yeah, it, it worked. So it did work. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, yeah, it worked. Yeah, <laughs> brought our own juice. Uh, you got any other questions, Billy? Before we let Trace go, I think you took his last question was how sweet it was. It yeah, to that be a definitely was a Billy question. Mm-hmm. Billy's just nodding. Billy was a quarterback, too, so he kind of knows what it was like to be Trace McSorley yeah, at Penn State. Mm-hmm. Oh, I have one last last question. Uh, have you ever practiced with RG3 and tried to throw a football at a tree with him? Mm. Throw a football out of a tree? At a tree. He's really good at hitting <laughs> trees. Like, I'm talking from 40, 50 yards away. If you pick out a tree, he can hit it. Uh, I mean, we throw at the goalpost. That's about as close as we ever got okay. to the tree. Who's the, who wins at that? Uh, so like we do it like between all our quarterbacks, like after practice, like we'll just do a competition. So it, it rotates who wins. Our quarterback coach, uh, Coach Urban, gets in on it too, and like he's like sneaky good at it sometimes too. Shit, I think I could throw a hundred times. I wouldn't hit it once. Um, all right, well, Trace, good luck rest of the season. We'll see you in the playoffs. Sorry about the knee. Sorry we had to break that news to you. But we appreciate you're a warrior, dude. Like we last night, we were texting with each other. We're like, there's no way he's gonna come on after he got hurt. But nope, just play through. That's mm-hmm. a football guy. Philip Rivers played in oh, an yeah. AFC Championship game on a torn ACL. You came on part of my take after straining your knee. So yeah. you tell me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. All right, Trace. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. No, I yeah, appreciate you guys having me on. All right. Thanks, man. Good luck. Thanks, man. Right. And if appreciate you ever want to play Call of Duty with Billy, he wants to play with you. Uh, me, me and Billy can get in there. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll, 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 we'll hook it up. up. Yeah, yeah. He he's, he's got a lot of time on his hands. Is he good? Uh, are hey, you good, Billy? He's No, he's, he's not. I got, a, I got a .75 KD now. Point seven. I'm going off. No, Hank. Right, well, well, Hank, I fixed What is yours? It, What's yours? I fixed, I fixed the, I don't know off the top of my head. But yeah, I mean, going you probably off. have well, other yeah. things going on, yeah. Yeah, I got other things. All right, man. We'll see you. Thanks so much. See you, man. Have a good one.